everybody, and welcome to Motivational Monday, where you can learn how simple shifts in your habits can lead to profound results in the way that you feel and in the way that you look. Today, we're going to be talking about homocysteine and its impact on your cardiovascular system. For those of you that are not familiar with what homocysteine is, it's an amino acid that's non-protein based, meaning most amino acids in our diet have a, they create protein in the body. This is a non-protein amino acid that is created as a byproduct of the digestion of protein. So when you eat protein and you break down that protein, you create more homocysteine. It's also heavily influenced by diet because there are certain key nutrients that you need to have in your diet to protect you from elevated homocysteine. Because once those levels start to go up, they can affect the cardiovascular system in by creating more plaque formation, by damaging the arterial wall, so leaving you uh, more prone to uh, a heart attack or a stroke. It also can help to clot blood. So this is something you definitely want to manage. Also, elevated homocysteine levels speaks to a nutritional deficiency that's very important to help protect your body against a whole host of issues, including Alzheimer's disease. So you really want to find out what your homocysteine levels are, and you want to take steps to help reduce it. In today's video, I want to show you how you can do that. So the first thing you want to do to find out more about your homocysteine is to figure out what your levels are. And the way to do that is to go to your doctor and have your blood work done. So the next time you go, especially if you're a cardiac patient or if you're at high cardiac risk because you have heart disease in your family, you want to include your homocysteine panel on your blood work. While cholesterol is a very important value to know, there are other risk factors associated with heart disease and it's good to know all of them so that you know what you're managing and how best to go about that. So have your doctor check that out so that you can start with knowing what your levels are. Once you know that information, you can start navigating your diet. Even before then, you can still navigate your diet and start making some changes to help lower that number and keep it under control right now. So while homocysteine is created by the body, it is influenced by diet, and there's two key things that I want you to consider and remember when you're trying to manage your homocysteine levels. The first one is your intake of B6, B12, and folic acid, primarily, primarily from diet-based sources, but also perhaps supplementation if you, if you need it once you know your levels are elevated. Those three nutrients are the nutrients I was referring to at the top of the segment when I said that when you find out that you have an elevated homocysteine, you're essentially finding out that you have low B6, B12, folic acid. It's the de depletion of these nutrients that can take you down a pathway that can lead to degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. So you want to make sure that you're getting added adequate amounts of B6, B12, and folic acid. But here's the challenge. Even if you're eating great food that contain these nutrients, which I'll talk about later in the segment, you can easily deplete those nutrients with the consumption of alcohol, caffeine, processed and sugary foods. So they're easily washed away in your urine every time you take in alcohol, caffeine, or sugar and processed foods. So think about that. That's that's pretty regularly people are consuming these items and they're basically washing away these key nutrients that can protect them from homocysteine. So that's the first thing to consider. The second thing to consider is the quantity of animal protein you have in your diet, the particularly things like beef, dark meat, turkey, and chicken, those things that have an elevated amount of nutrients in there that can lead to elevated homocysteine levels. So you want to look at how much animal protein is in your diet and reduce that quantity. So if you're having four ounces at each meal, that's not overdoing it at all. But if you're eating eight ounces of protein or you're trying to do an Atkins style diet or a paleo diet and you're taking the protein to an extreme, then that's something to consider because that extra protein can lead to higher uh, homocysteine levels, particularly if you're deficient in those three nutrients. So those are the two dietary considerations. What I want to talk to you about next is how to get B6, B12, and folic acid into your diet. So the first nutrient you want to be considering is your B6 intake. So now I can do a whole video on just B6 alone because it's so integral to so many enzymatic and metabolic processes. It's so essential and it's being washed away oftentimes by the way that we eat and the things that we drink. So you really want to make sure you're getting adequate B6. Foods that have a good amount of B6 include sweet potatoes and potatoes, avocado, pistachio nuts, and sunflower seeds. So start including things like that in your diet a little bit more regularly to help get some B6 in your diet. When you want to take in folic acid, so folic acid is also necessary for so many other things. Um, it's necessary for healthy pregnancies, uh, brain function, mood disorders, and things like that. So you want to take in lots of dark green leafy vegetables. I happen to have here collard greens and dandelion greens, but spinach would be good, and spinach is also a good source of B6. Uh, you could do kale, um, chard, any dark green leafy vegetable will help give you some folic acid, as will black beans, so you can include those in your diet. 
B12 is a little bit trickier because B12 is really most prevalent in red meat, but you don't want to be eating lots of red meat if you have an elevated homocysteine. So one way to get that into your diet um, without taking a supplement is with nutritional yeast. That may or may not feel right for you, but it is a consideration and it's certainly something that's useful for vegans and vegetarians. That being said, these foods are really important to include, but you may very well find yourself needing to supplement your diet with a supplement to get adequate levels of B6, B12, and folic acid, and I'm going to talk to you about that next. So if you're just looking for general health and well-being and you have no risk factors for heart disease and it doesn't run in your family, but you're just looking to make sure that you protect yourself down the road, then just eating the foods that I discussed might be sufficient for you. But if you have a history of cardiovascular disease or it runs in your family, and or you've gone to your doctor and you have found out that you do have a, an elevated homocysteine level. In addition to the diet, you might need supplementation. Again, discuss this with your doctor so that your doctor can better guide you through the process. But most supplements to lower homocysteine contain those three nutrients, B6, B12, folic acid in differing amounts, and they also combine it usually with something called trimethylglycine, which is also known as betaine. That combination of those four nutrients helps us lower homocysteine levels, and it's very important to make sure that you do that if you find that you have, you have an elevated number. So talk to your doctor about that, what supplement might be best for you, and to make sure that you're absorbing it. So what you want to find out then, once you had your test done and you tested positive for homocysteine or an elevated homocysteine, you want to start your supplements according to doctor's instructions, and then you want to follow up within about six months to make sure that you're absorbing those nutrients properly and that you're making sure that it's, it's working to lower your homocysteine. Remember something that even if you supplement, if you're still drinking lots of alcohol or lots of caffeine or eating lots of sugar or processed food, you could be easily wiping away those nutrients that you're, you're trying to supplement through the pills that you're taking. So even then, those dietary factors are important. Heart disease is a major problem in this country and around the world. In the United States, it's a leading cause of death. Knowing your cholesterol levels is important, but it's also important to know all your risk factors. If you have a history of heart disease in your family, there is no way to know what exactly preceded that event in your family. Was it an elevated cholesterol? Was that the problem? Was it an elevated homocysteine? Was it inflammation in the cardiovascular system? We don't know. So it's best to know, have an overview of all your risk factors so that you know which to prioritize and address. Most doctors and most people in this country prioritize cholesterol, but that might not be the problem for you. It might be homocysteine, so it's good to know all of your values so that you can address them individually. Heart disease, unfortunately, is the leading cause of death, but it's a highly preventable disease. Knowing your numbers is important. So there you have another video that might be useful for you in your quest for optimum health. If you like tips like this and you're looking for more ways to improve your diet, improve your lifestyle, then come on over to barbaramendezenutrition.com and you can sign up for the mailing list there. Once you do, you will see, receive an email from me every Monday with either a video or a written blog with a recipe, some inspirational tip, or some informative video to help move you closer to your health goals. If you can also you can follow me on Facebook or Twitter. If you know somebody with heart disease, please forward this on to them. And if you have any feedback or comments about homocysteine and the impact it had on your body or the ways that you managed it, then come on over to the blog at Barbara Mendez Nutrition and make a comment there. I would love to hear your feedback and respond and also have others that watch the blog to also benefit from your experience. Thanks so much. Have an awesome Monday. Have a great week and I will see you next time.